Aloha everybody and welcome to the Wild Wahine. This is Keilani and this is going to be your full moon in Scorpio as well as your astral forecast for this upcoming week so that you can work with all the beautiful energy and make fantastic choices in your life. So today we're going to start off actually talking about the full moon in Scorpio. So the moon in Scorpio is in its fall. So it's not necessarily the most positive place for the moon to be. The moon's home, of course, as you know, is in Cancer. And it's interesting right now because even though the moon is in fall, um, so is Mars, which is the ruler of Scorpio. So we both have Mars and the moon in their fall during this particular period. Oh. However, with that being said, there is conversation that's having between them where even though they're both in their fall and may not be like the strongest place for the moon to be, the strongest place for Mars to be, they still are having mutual reception because the moon in Mars's home, which is Scorpio, and then we also have Mars, which is in the moon's home, which is Cancer. So they went on vacation to each other's houses and they're having that experience. So like, for example, when Mars goes into the home of Cancer where, where he's visiting, he's on vacation, you know he's coming into this home and he's seeing like wow you know the bed is like soft there's all kinds of tea and he just really wants to have a beer and then it's like no beer there's just like tea and like fresh juices and maybe there's like meals that are set up because of course cancer would have like cleaned the home and have fresh linen and have like all kinds of lotions and you know mars is like I just really don't even care. I'm just gonna like shower and like go to bed. And and like cancer is like, no, 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 have my bed, you know? Like I I like don't sleep on the couch. I cleaned all the sheets for you. I really want this to feel like home. I really want this to be comfortable. I want you to, even though I'm not there, I want you to feel like I'm there. I really want to take care of you. Like I'm there and Mars is just like, oh man, you know, like what am I gonna do? Like it, like I'm bored, everything is done. So Mars might be like wanting to tinker around the house and figure like, okay, like what can I fix? What can I do? What is active here? Then we have the moon, which is used to being in that luxurious space that we just described the moon now is in Mars's home of Scorpio where there's like locks on the dungeon downstairs the dungeon of who knows what's in the dungeon that well, was Scorpio so we all know what's in the dungeon downstairs <laughs> there's like locks on the door a secret bookcase that's all locked up that nobody knows anything about it's darker in there there's no eye pillow you know there's no food you're hoping that the linen is clean there's no conditioner there's there's no conditioner there's 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 not a lot of luxury or homey type space there's no food there's maybe like a stalk of celery in there and that's about it and you're like oh where's the closest grocery store and they're like oh i we just order we don't cook the moon is like what <laughs> We don't like you order out like where, where's my home cooked meal? Where's my fresh bread? So so this is what I'm saying. They're, they're having this conversation, but they're staying in each other's home, but it's not very comfortable. So the challenge with this energy is going to be uh, stress in the home, stress that has to do with mom things, stress that has to do with the mother archetype. Um, family relations are going to be stressed. I made a video about Mars and Cancer, so we're going to see a lot of the same kind of things happening with this particular full moon. Arguments, passive aggressiveness, things that have to do with just having a difficult time with the mother archetype even in your life. It could actually be a physical mother, it could be an older sibling, it could be a neighbor, it could be the head of the block association who's like getting on you for your lawn. Really with the person who has some sort of power perhaps in your life and how you're negotiating those things things that have to do with women passive aggressiveness that's something that happens a lot of time in Scorpio when Mars is expressing itself in Scorpio as opposed to Aries where the aggression is is can be quite physical and out in the open it's definitely a lot more psychological it's a lot more kind of in mental in the way that it's irritating it can feel irritating things that are said just under the you know slipped under or back handed compliments, those types of things that you're like, did they really mean that? Is that really what happened? It could have to do with like hidden family secrets, things that have to do with trauma in the family that are coming up to the surface, or maybe they have and they needed to be revisited because new information came out or things like that. So working around a lot of childhood and core wounds can be, this can be a really good time for that. Definitely just a time where you're going to be very sensitive, a lot more sensitive to things, a lot more possibly a little more irritated by things. Um, however, we do have Mercury and Venus that were conjunct and that are kind of separating right now in the sign of Taurus. Um, Venus is in, you know, all of her glory in um, Taurus because it's her domicile. So even though these things are feeling a little bit difficult, they'll still be able to be communicated and worked out in a, in a heart 
centered way. Some of the positive things though that can come out of this is giving a job to do, like working around your home, fixing things in the home, um, like physically doing things in the home, home improvement type things, um, working with a mother child energy, anything that has to do with like healing relationships. It's a great time to do some cord cutting, which is separation, especially if you're in a codependent relationship with a mother type archetype in your life, allowing yourself to have some autonomy. That's going to be really important at this time. And then just taking care of everything that has to do with your family or home things or your children. We also have Pluto going retrograde on the 27th that's going to be all the way until october the 5th so pluto is in retrograde for essentially five months now pluto is an outer planet it's not one of the inner planets kind of like venus and mercury and mars when they go retrograde we kind of feel it in our everyday life especially mercury retrograde because everybody's heard about that so this is going to have a little bit more of a generational feel pluto has that to it pluto has a lot to do with power and authority and structures and rebirth and death creation and destruction how we do that in our individual lives and how that's going to play out in a larger scene especially with structures that have to do with our government and people that are in power so even though we might not necessarily see this retrograde because it really is still staying in the same sign which is capricorn this whole retrograde period we still might feel it in the everyday way but we might see it with the way with our structures now when retrogrades happen just in general just general rule for retrogrades it is giving us an opportunity to look back and to possibly go back and change some things to alter some things to have an opportunity to do some remediation it's an opportunity to reassess and see how things have gone in our lives are we happy with the choices that we made where do we need to make a change where do we need to have a pause a lot of times people ask for more time so that they can fix things and they feel like they never do well retrogrades gives you an opportunity to kind of revisit things and redo those things now with pluto um, being in capricorn the u.s has its own chart the birth of the US, which was essentially when they uh, the Declaration of Independence was signed. It's called the US Sibley Chart. That's what's you, what a lot of astrologers use to like kind of forecast things about the United States. Well, right now we are having a Pluto return. Essentially, Pluto has made its long journey, which is anywhere from 15 to 20 years in each sign. It's made its long journey through all the signs and it's coming all the way back to Capricorn, which was the place that it was in when the country itself was reborn. So we're having a lot of these conversations about revolution and about like not, like not liking the structure and wanting to let go of the structure and moving forward and having um, and like creating something new, which was a lot of the conversation that the founding fathers had during that time in 1776 in wanting to break free from England and wanting to create a new structure and not wanting to pay the same taxes and do all of that. These are all conversations that we're having right now. So it's interesting as we see this Pluto return and then eventually in 2024, Pluto is going to be in Aquarius, which is actually going to give us that new structure that we were asking asking for. We just have to determine if that's indeed the one that we wanted because it's Aquarius. So um, with this collective energy of Pluto retrograde, we're dealing with karma. We're dealing with karma that has to do with our countries, could have to do with politics, Personally, it could be a dark night of the soul. It can be the letting go of something. That's kind of the theme for this week, which is kind of separating ourselves from the things that we are codependent on, the person or persons or systems that have power over us, relinquishing that power and then gaining back our autonomy and being in the driver's seat, essentially, of our life. We're going to see that through line, essentially, this week. So last, but definitely not least, we have the sun conjuncting Uranus in the sign of Taurus. So with the sun, we're dealing with our individual selves, our personal power, leadership, solar figures, which has to do with like celebrities or people that are like in the spotlight, so to speak. So it could be like basketball players. It can be artists. It can be anybody that is talked about, anybody that's seen in the world. It can be how we're seen in the world, our ego. All of those things have to do with the sun. Uranus now is the trickster energy. It's all about change and sudden upheaval. It's about upsetting the apple cart. It's about revolution. It's it's about freedom. It's about technology, bringing new things that's going to disrupt the system, disrupt the old structure, create something new. This is all happening in the sign of Taurus, which is a fixed sign, which isn't really keen on brand new things kind of not Taurus's jam. Not to say that Taurus doesn't like change because Taurus does like change. It just likes to be in control of the change and it likes to have change over a long period of time. Kind of like how I feel like politics is. Sometimes you have these new policies. Everybody gets really excited. But when you read the fine line, it's like, and we're going to enact this. And over the next six years and you're like, six years, 
That's the kind of thing that Taurus likes. Well, that's kind of not what it's going to get right now. So the thing that you're going to probably get shaken up in is going to be the thing that you don't want to have a sudden change in. It's really going to be the thing that you wanted to hold, you know, and you wanted to hold it for a while. Duct tape analogy that I like to give for people. It's those parts in our lives where we take that good old duct tape and we wrap it because we either don't have the time to fix it, we don't want to fix it because it's painful or it's hard, or we're just in denial. We're just like, oh, I'm just going to tape it and it'll be fine. And we don't want to, like, we just don't want to change that aspect aspect of our life. Well, one of the reasons why we don't want to change that aspect of our life is because it's going to be rough. So because we don't want to change that aspect of our life, we wrap some duct tape around it. And what Uranus does is it comes in and it just rips off the duct tape and says, ha ha, you know, like we're changing it and we're doing something new. Now Uranus is also like symbolized by the fool and the tarot. Uh, the fool is like going on their hero's journey with just a couple of things in the knapsack and the dog is barking at his ankles as he's about to literally walk off a cliff because he's just having this experience. It's that trickster energy. It's that that, like I'm just here to like experience and see what happens and I'm just going to roll with the punches which is not something that we like to do especially with Torian things Torian things having to do with our relationships our money our home um, art those are not things that we necessarily like to have a lot of change in because those are the things that feel good Venusian things feel good and they provide security Taurus is all about security so when we're upsetting that that upsets a lot of different things one of the things that you can do during this particular um, aspect is to potentially like you become the person who's shifting things you know it's gonna kind of sort of happen anyway so there's no use in holding on to it you might as well just kind of like rip off the duct tape yourself and then dig into what you have to dig in some of the positive things that can come from this whether you do it or whether Uranus the energy comes in and it just kind of causes this sudden upheaval is is that finally you'll now be able to be in the driver's seat of your life you'll be able to own things and run things how you want them so it's good to be able to rebel against something to change the course of things um, to evolve to quickly like shift into something else some of the negative things that can happen with this is excessive risk taking so actually putting yourself in the line of of crazy and then just wondering why the crazy happened probably not not that good of an idea. Um, the risk taking for risk taking sake, the rebellion for the sake of the rebellion, the destruction because you just wanted to destroy something for no apparent reason without like creating another structure there, that cannot necessarily be the most positive thing that happens. Uranus is synonymous with accidents, so that can happen for sure when it's in Taurus that we're talking about accidents that could happen within the home, accidents to the body, um, accidents because it's um, conjunct the sun to solar figures. So people who are well known, people, um, a visible accident that happens um, and any of those things, accidents that potentially have to do with some sort of technology. Um, also, because it's in the sign of Taurus, it could be accidents that are related to like animals or with the earth or like earthquakes or volcanic things, things that physically have to do with our earth plane those are things that can happen or other type of upheavals like that or things that were unexpected that end up taking a really gnarly turn. So that's it for this week. Um, that is your energy for this week in terms of the highlights. I hope this helps you and I hope this helps you make fantastic choices for the week. If you have any questions, just leave them below. Um, if you are interested in having a consult, you can definitely um, contact me at www.thewildwahine.as.me and you can get all of the information there and book your consultation, whether that be a natal chart reading or whether that be a tarot reading. I will have my membership up in a couple of weeks. I will have my website up in a couple of weeks, which I'm super excited about because I'll have a lot more offerings for you to choose from in multiple different ways that you can work with me and multiple different price points in that. So if you like this video, tag people, let people know, like it, comment, all those things just always help the channel. You guys have a fantastic full moon in Scorpio and I will see you later. Aloha.